Okay, welcome back uh, everyone to this second presentation of this evening, opening, hoping that everything now is going fine, hoping that you can hear me. Um, so I was just introduced the, the second talk of this, uh, this, this part of the day of, of, the, of, the, of the session. The second talk is provided by Monica Brandes from the Kidigen OSM team and is uh, titled Improving OSM Data in Coastal Communities. Hello, my name is Chad Blevins. I'm a consultant with the Open Data and Development team at Critigen. And together with my colleagues, Monica Brandis and Bentley Breithaupt, we decided to use our map quality measurement tool to look at the quality of OSM data in different coastal cities around the world. Our map quality tool uses Atlas checks to identify and visualize OSM errors and help prioritize critical fixes. Why look at OSM data quality in coastal cities? The UN estimates that almost 40% of the world's population, that's 2.4 billion people, live within 100 kilometers of the coast, with around 10% of those people living less than 10 meters above sea level. Coastal communities naturally attract people. They generally have an important economic role for a country, and port cities are among the oldest in the world, with major seaports still being used for the movement of commodities and international trade. For coastal communities not located near major seaports, ocean and marine resources are an important source of food and income, fish being one of the most consumed sources of animal protein in the world. Many coastal communities and island nations rely on tourism as a major contributor to the GDP, with vacationers staying in hotels, eating at restaurants, and spending money on other goods and services. Along with all the benefits of living along the coast comes a multitude of risk. Floods are the most frequent and destructive natural disaster and one that coastal communities constantly face. Cyclones can bring massive amounts of rainfall and when combined with storm surge, they wreak havoc on some of the world's most economically important cities, as we saw with Hurricane Sandy, which essentially shut down New York City in 2012. Other coastal communities face the risk of flooding in combination with other disasters, such as earthquakes, tsunamis, landslides, and other weather-related events like drought and fire. Part of building resilient communities is the ability to respond when major events occur. Having teams of responders with proper training and equipment is essential, as is high-quality data. As information flows through social media, and this has captivated our lives, we've recognized the importance to have access of high quality data of which maps are the foundation. So how did we choose the cities that we looked at? There were some tough choices to make when deciding which cities to focus our analysis on. We knew we wanted global coverage with a few cities in each region. And we also knew we wanted cities large enough for comparison purposes. After some back and forth, we started our decision by researching two main variables the overall city population and the economic importance of that city to the country and region. We ended up with 12 cities. In North America, we have Miami. <clears throat> it's a coastal metropolis located in Southern Florida, and it's a global center for finance, commerce, culture, arts, and international trade. The city itself is home to 500,000 residents, but the Miami-Dade County is 2.5 million, which is which, what we use for this analysis. Uh, Miami, the average elevation in Miami is two meters above sea level, making it extremely susceptible to storm surge and extreme weather events. We also looked at New Orleans. It's a major port city located on the mouth of the Mississippi, making it an important economic hub of the United States. It's home to about 400,000 people, so it's rather small, and the average elevation is one to two feet below sea level. There's a series of man-made infrastructure that protects this, protects this city from flooding that dates back to the 1960s, putting it at high risk to climate-related events. In South America, we looked at Guayaquil, Ecuador. It's the largest city and seaport in Ecuador. It's home to 3 million people and sits within a tidal zone along the west bank of the Guayas River, surrounded by low-lying swampland. The city is at risk to climate-related events, along with intense seismic activity, including earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis. Just south of that, 
is Lima, Peru. It's the capital and largest city in Peru, home to 10 million people. It sits within a desert zone overlooking the Pacific Ocean. As one of the largest cities of the Americas, Lima is at risk to major natural disasters such as earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis, and climate-related events. In Europe, we chose Venice, Italy. <laughs> Venice is built from over 100 small islands separated by canals and interconnected by bridges. The city sits in the shallows of the Venetian Lagoon, and it's on average one meter above sea level. But recent surveys have discovered that the city is gradually subsiding, making it even more susceptible to sea level rise. In Africa, we chose to look at Dar es Salaam. It's a major seaport of Tanzania and one of the fastest growing cities in the world. It's home to over 6 million people in an economic hub of East Africa. Regular flooding combined with poor infrastructure are the primary hazards affecting residents. Cape Town, South Africa is on the shore of Table Bay in South Africa. It's the legislative capital of South Africa and is home to over four and a half million people, making it one of the most populous cities of Africa with a 2% growth rate year over year. Cape Town recently experienced three consecutive years of extreme drought, causing one of the world's largest scale water restrictions ever to take place. Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire is the capital of Cote d'Ivoire and one of the most populous French speaking cities in Africa. It is home to three and a half million residents in a major seaport that is a center of economic activity. The city is at risk to climate related hazards that are compounded by densely populated areas and poor infrastructure throughout the city. In Asia, we looked at Bangkok, Thailand, which is the capital of Thailand. It's also a financial hub in the most populous city in Thailand, and it's home to about 15% of Thailand's population, with an estimated 10.5 million people. Floods are one of the most imminent natural disasters facing the capital, as we saw in 2010 and 11, when floods shut down parts of the city, affecting over 7 million people. Uh, Metro Manila is the capital of the Philippines and the second most populous city. So we're just looking at the metro area of Manila, not the larger um, <clears throat> Manila and surrounding areas. It's located on the island of Luzon and sits along the eastern shore of Manila Bay. And it's a global and regional economic hub being home in the broader area of almost 13 million people. It's at risk to large scale natural disasters such as earthquakes, typhoons, tsunamis, floods, and landslides. Shenzhen, China is a major city that sits along the east bank of the Peril River estuary and is home to nearly 15 million people. It sits along a major fault and is most at risk to flooding and landslide events. And last but not least is Melbourne, Australia. It's the capital and second most populous city of Australia. The city is home to 5 million people and sits along Port Phillip Bay, one of the largest bays in the world. Climate-related events such as flooding, droughts, and bushfires are the most imminent threats residents face. And for this analysis, I'd like to note that we included Port Phillip Bay also, just to extend that coastline uh, of what would normally just be Melbourne. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Monica. Thank you, Chair, for covering why we're picking those coastal cities. In order to inspect the OSM data quality for those coastal cities, our team handpicked five road quality check to inspect the road network quality, as well as the water building digitizations. We inspect the AOIs, the area of point, area of interest, um, a lot of ocean bleeding if there is ocean being digitized across to or submerge the roads and then if there is any um, building and water was overlap and was poorly digitized 
From there, we're collecting those results. We're using the map quality measurement tool. It is a vector grid layer to show to the map air hotspot. The grid size determines the distribution of the map airs. So if the grid is relatively small, you, that means you have a very dense um, hotspot. Vice versa, if the grid size is relatively large, you're probably looking at somewhat evenly or render, renderingly distribution of your map airs. In order to generate it, we start to select the city boundary. We're building a bounding box out of it. And as you can see, we're using the KD tree to slice every time we slice two, four, eight, etc. to recalculating the map errors. In order to do that, um, for multiple times, our program will able to navigate the, um, the hotspot depending on the user inputs and how we define the hotspot. Take this research and uh, um, presentation, for example, we're using over 95% have zero or one flag. Um, OSM features. So basically, if it's one or zero map errors, we don't care, but the rest of them, we want to actually take a very close look. And take Bangkok, for example, you can see there are 96.5% of grids basically has no map errors, which leaves 3.5% grids are a really, really dense hotspot. That means if you're actually arrange a community uh, gathering, you can actually focus on those hotspots and fix it. There is one biggest hotspot you can see in the dots. It contains over 112 um, flag in less than few kilometers, square kilometers. After we do that, we publish all of our results into the website so more and more people can be aware and um, see the results. You can see this is a comparison between a hotspot um, in Bangkok with um, the similar cities in Manila for Philippines, which has a very low um, hotspot area. And there is like, there is kind of evenly colored um, with a large grid. The map quality, um, we put, you know, those websites together, we put the osmquality.io. If you get the time to check, please go ahead and check it. You can see there are 12 coastal cities. You can see there are every city has their rankings as well as their quality, road and building quality as well as the nature features. Also, we provide a grid size to help you navigate. Is my city is randomly distributed on my map air or is my city a very dense distributed? Um, so you can use those to engage your local communities making an extra efforts there. With our CTC rankings, we're actually using a total air rate, which is calculated by the air rate from the building and the air rate from the roads. As you can see, some of the cities has um, a poor road quality and some of the cities has every actually very decent failures on the buildings. We use that, we kind of evenly distribute it, you know, divided into to just get a rough understanding of what those cities and their quality is. We also find out there are some limitations in the city um, when we're trying to do this uh, analysis. First of all, you can see address is really important for disaster response, but is it easy to develop and overarching global usage of Alice uh, ch check for, you know, for address system? No, there's a reason why. Every city, every country has their own addressing system. Venice, for example, there are 95 thousands of address points only have address equals 
address neighborhood tag, but there's no street associated. So if being flagged very high in our、um, Alice check, but that doesn't mean that it is wrong.、Um, so develop and use a very address, you know. Appropriate check that reflected your own country system is very important. The next thing we also、um, observe is the building road intersection is a global issues with multiple resource, multiple sources of aerial photos. So there are some aerial photos digitizing this way versus the other. When you are actually using a different sourcing. For mapping, where you you're most likely to see an overlap between the building and the road. Luckily,、um, from our experience, it doesn't really shows if you have a building intersect with the road,、um, it will cause routing errors or anything, which bring the least amount of impact.、Um, for the disaster response case, we're trying to、um, work on here. There's another things we observe during this、um, analysis is there are some Alice checker is really useful checking on the generalized coastline, checking on some of the water area and waterway being properly mapped. However, there is a limitation of usage when it comes to a developed coastal city where there are a lot of man-made piers. As you can see, the snapshots we provide right here,、um, there are thirty-five flags because those piers are too generalized. But we all know. They are man-made and they're legitly mapped. So this is something where we can have more in interaction with the LS check, as well as also use those in the rural area to provide even more、um, valuable insights for this、um, results. Thank you for all our developers, analysts, and everyone that helps on the website publishing. And thank you, Kim and Taf, kind of our sponsor for this project in our company to provide the financial and definitely a lot of mental support. If you have more further questions, please go on and try OSM Quality Dial. Give us a give us some feedback. And please definitely reach out to us if you have your CDs, or if you think an MQM is a good things for you to actually、um, improve OSM quality for your end. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Monica. Thank you also, Chad, that was part of the presentation for the presentation, and also to, to thanks to all the Critigen OSM team. Was very very interesting presentation, very interesting approach also to determine and to, to study、uh, critical area that, as you see, there is they're very very changing on time and they are a varying feature of interest for、uh, for the future.、Uh, thank you for choosing country also all over the world as you provide different example and as you show and as also we were discussing before、uh, the issue also are this. Difficult to to be understand because maybe some issue that is some part of the world is an error. Maybe some place is not an error because also the world is different. Everything everything there is a we try to identify all in the same schema, but sometimes it, sometimes also most of the time is very difficult to have a unique tag for everything. And also if we don't have a unique tag, we have also error that are different, but that we cannot identify as error.、Um, So, would you like to? I believe that this is a very interesting topic about the the possible error. Do you found something、uh, similar to the case of Venice that you that you explain in、uh, in the other cities?、Um, we have, yeah. So the the Alice check is kind of a map error check where it's、um, was trying to use you know a lot of cities and it trying to develop as generalized as possible. We do find like there are some preference one over the other,、um, but because this is also an open source GitHub repository, we will definitely welcome. Like, hey, Venice will have a Venice address check.、Uh, 
let's say it, Italy will have another Italy address check because their address systems are so different. We're calling that um, as a limitation here for global analysis, but it shouldn't be a limitation for your um, personal usage. You can, if you're, um, you work with a developer or if your person, you yourself are interested um, participating. Um, I think the there's no there there's no ceiling to it. And um, if you or your community have some interest to check with us, like, hey, I I want to do X Y Z, but this we the Alice check actually have over eighty different items for you to check. Um, so if you feel like I want to actually get some help. Um, just drop us an email. We're happy to help. Yeah, I believe that this is a good, uh, a new good instrument to like uh, to prioritize the work in different in different area. Maybe I don't know. A local community can start in their small area to, to identify also. Like in a country, like we can try to provide the, the element in a country. You say that you also identify uh, like a grid, and so in the grid you found that you have a po point with more errors and point with less error. And it's like a new approach, uh, like uh, a tasking manager for the errors, like identifying the area where there are more issues and start to move, uh, ranking them and start to, to in similar approach. Yeah, we Do used to have a one um, kind of a mainstream. Unfortunately, currently it's a little bit lack of funding that we're trying to work with a hard and tasking manager. They have their grid. So we're hoping if we can replace that grid with MQM grid. So like you can download entire sets just for the things you want to fix. And that will be that will be kind of our ultimate goal in the future. Yeah, this is a very interesting uh, future development. And also this also become a tool that uh, is available for everyone and that can everyone can use the also without also without having a, a the, informatic knowledge on how to set up the tool this, is, this can be a very useful uh, point because we are also taking more and more care about the mapping of things but also it's important to, to check the control and i believe that both the talk of this evening uh, this evening for for me that i'm italy i believe from the the, the last session that they say let's say uh for talk about this topic of uh, quality assurance that i believe is it's also important for the for the for, say, for the expert map for the expert map and also for providing a product that is really uh, useful and very used by by everyone. Do you like? Uh, do you found? Do you believe that uh, there there are some? Kind, you at the end you I, I saw that you present some feature that were more interest more interesting to uh, area like uh, uh, coastal area. Do you do you believe that it, there are some type of errors, some type of approach that could be used in different areas? Like uh, in uh, I don't know if you are going to do the approach in uh, maybe La Montana area or in uh, another type of area in a, in a big cities. There could be some type of error that could be more and less present. Yeah, um, if uh, if you are on our website, or if you get the chance to check on our website, we actually have a very different use case. Um, in U.S., we pick the top 51 U.S. cities in every state, and we basically do a health check every year to see their trends, um, to kind of engage more of a competition between cities in one country and just trying to see, like, how can we actually mitigate more and more, like, through the years, through the trends as well. Um, MQM tool particularly are very useful for um, instead of just mapping party, it also is very useful to understand the distribution of the map errors to figuring out if it's just randomly pop up. So if it's randomly pop up, you might have a lot of new users um, as well as bot users like the AI users in in the in the future that triggers those failures but if it's somewhat dense then you know hey this area probably is very tricky i probably want a little bit more experienced or actually have a bigger mapping party to you know and i i don't like to use the cleaned up but i i want to say it's like you want to gather 
everyone's wisdom, and you will be able to actually provide even better map quality than um, than what it currently is. Yeah, it could be a very good solution. Like the, not to 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 clear the errors, but to create a community in that area that could be able to. Uh, use the local knowledge because, as you presented, as you said before, coming back to the error of, of Venice, uh, you are not sure that these are real errors. Maybe some particular convention of, I say, just, I say, if you have considered a country, maybe the convention is for all the country. But also, like in that case, that Venice is a particular issue of a city inside a country that maybe that was part of that. I know that the, the Venice, the address of Venice, were imported. So maybe something like you know, for all the, the the region of uh, Veneto region, so we're like more trusted. So it's in, quite important to to have them uh, the type of information, but also the the, the check could uh, create and could develop local communities that uh, try together to solve the the errors. And also there are multiple other instruments that could be used to solve error, and this could be the the, like the accelerator of the creation of the of community, also the creation of, uh, uh, let's say, of different um, uh, focus on the different areas. I, I'm very interested in this instrument. And I think that we can come in contact. I have some ideas for the Italian community that maybe you can share. We can share with the others and creating this, this issue. Could be also. I believe that you are, are available for. So the tool is available for everyone. It's available on, on GitHub. The tool and, is available. Yeah. We we can there is a few ways if like you have the results or we we can provide a GitHub um, with a little cleanup so you can actually self service. Um, we also have um, we also have person of you really um, unsure where to start it or you don't have the data that's actually currently um, produced then um, we're also happy to um, collaborate and um, see where and how and how much we can help. Yeah, very, very interesting. Also, I believe that you are available also for other communities and also for everyone that would like to keep track. So I believe it is important, the, the, the example that you made, that you said before about the, the, the track also of, that, uh, of, the, of the errors. Maybe this can be also uh, Quality that everyone is hoping that the percentage is reducing, but maybe that can be that you know, some type of activity increase, or maybe some error are uh, propagate and there is some element to be fixed. So it can, can be also interesting uh, a time approach and a check that uh, lasting time in different periods of the year, so different years that you have this information that is provided in different time. Yeah, for sure. I saw that there are, uh, there are no more questions, maybe it's it's the final question and everyone is a little bit tired of all, the whole day. So I I thank you very much, uh, Monica and Chad that presented and also all the, the group that uh, done, did the work. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and for being here for the, to the tool and also for creating a tool and share it because it's we, we here we consider that it is uh, something uh, mandatory and is something that we are used to do. But I believe that every time is important to remind that to, to say that thank you for sharing the tool because also it could be a starting point for other projects, for other uh, uh, for other community to start and to grow. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, for all the people that are still watching us, uh, I I can say that the, the, the event is concluded. I believe that Monica and Chad, if you have more time, you can move to the post-talk uh, chat room if someone else would like just to talk to present uh, some, the, the issue and would like to continue the, the final presentation. And we can say that from, from the stage, from, from the main talk, it's, it's all. Uh, for two, for the first day, we were waiting for tomorrow at uh, 10 uh, UTC uh, for, for the, the second day of the state of the map. And good evening, good afternoon, good morning to someone, maybe. And see you in the next uh, event, in the next talk.